Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we will be discussing about the mechanics of Dhamma. Okay, I know that you are familiar with Dhamma. So that's very common, Filipino game. So we will be uh, discussing about the rules of the Dhamma game. So we are going to inculcate Ma in the common Filipino game called Dhamma. So let's get started. Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we will be discussing about the mechanics of Damat. So are you familiar of Damat? So we have here Damat comes from the Pinoy checkerboard game called Dama and Mathematics. It blends local culture, education, and digital technology that aim to make math, teaching, and learning child-friendly, challenging, and interactive. Now let's take a look at this picture. So does this look familiar to you? So we call this one as checkers game or we call it dama. And how about this one, this picture? So this is what we call the dama board. So you've noticed that on the side, we have here numbers from zero to seven from left to right. And we also have numbers from zero to seven from bottom to top. Same is true with this side. Since it is a two player game. And we have also the operations. We have the four operations that you can see for every row. We have addition, subtraction, division, and multiplication. And there's a pattern where you are going to place the operations on each block. So we really have to follow this Damat board if you are going to create one before playing. So let's start with the history. So Damat comes from the Filipino checkerboard game called Dama and Mathematics. It was invented in 1975 by Isos Wenda. He is actually a teacher from Sorsogon, Philippines, who had encountered problems in teaching math using traditional teaching methods. And it blends local culture, education, and digital technology that aims to make math teaching and learning student friendly, challenging, and interactive. So what are the benefits of the math? So why is it that we integrate the math in our class? So aside from teaching students how to play strat strategically, Damat also helps students to further develop and strengthen their math operational skills. We have operations involving whole numbers, integers, fractions, decimals. We also have radicals and polynomials, etc. Depending on what level you're playing. So we have here students who used to dislike math are actually learning how to use math when they play Damat and in the process learn the subject. So again, this is the game board. So we will be focusing on one level of the math. We are going to use the integer the math, and these are the positions of the chips. So considering we have here two players, and we have the red player and the blue player, so you are going to position your chips according to this setting, or according to this arrangement. Okay. So the basic gameplay. Now let us proceed to the mechanics of the game. First would be toss a coin to determine which player will have the first move. Then moving a chip means sliding it diagonally in a forward direction. So going back to the game board, for instance you are the blue player, all you have to do is slide your chips diagonally like this one, like that. So you are only going to slide your chip diagonally, landing the blocks with operations. So just like this one, to the division, where the division sign 
is located or this one it's just like playing dama only that um, there's an op there's operations involved and integers involved so we will discuss more about the mechanics and how you're going to do the scoring later on so next would be backward direction is only allowed when taking an opponent's chip so you can only move backward if you're going to capture an opponent's chip for instance this chip is here oh no, for instance um, the chip is here this one this red chip is here and the blue chip is on the minus sign so you can actually go backward because there's a chip that you are going to capture or eat from your opponent okay let's proceed and the two players are alternately take turns in moving a chip pass is not allowed so you really have to eat if there's something to eat or you really have to capture a chip if there's something to capture so after each move the player has to record his or her move in a score sheet so you are provided with a score sheet while you are playing or before you are going to start playing and every move you are going to record the the coordinate or the ordered pairs so for example if you move negative 9 here to this block for instance so you will be writing negative 9 0 3 okay the ordered pair would be negative 9 0 3 so you will write your chip number that's negative 9 and then you are going to enclose in a parenthesis the coordinates or the ordered pair remember you are going to focus first your attention on the x-axis and this is your y-axis it's just like you are dealing on a Cartesian plane so this would be okay let's say negative 9 is moved to this block so you will write negative 9 that tells us that you move the chip with a negative 9 number and then you landed on 0 3 okay 0 3 that is your first move okay that is if negative 9 has been moved to this block so by the way it depends on the orientation if for the opponent's orientation he or she would be using this values the x ordered pairs and this y ordered pairs and for the blue player you will be using this one as your x coordinates and this is your y coordinates okay let's proceed so in taking an opponent's chip the taker chip jumps over the taken chip and uses the operation symbol it lands on so a chip is declared dama if it reaches the end row of the opponent so for example okay for example this chip okay this red chip here is moved for, for example this red chip is moved to this block so let's say this is negative nine so you as the blue player you're going to decide which one which chip you are going to use to capture this chip because you have actually two options you can actually capture negative nine using this chip six but remember you have six divided by where it lands you are going to use the operation where it lands so you can have this one So that operation would be 6 divided by negative 9 or the other option would be this one if you're going to use the negative 1 chip to capture negative 9 it will land to the minus sign so this becomes okay for example okay so if you are going to use the operation you can solve it mentally for example if 
you use your blue chip to capture the negative line and it landed to net to the division symbol so this becomes 6 divided by 6 divided by negative 9 okay then you are going to solve so the score would be 6 divided by negative 9 that's actually um, 2 thirds negative 2 over 3 okay negative 2 over 3 so that shows that your score is negative because you are dividing with unlike signs and to help the scoring to make it easier you're going to express that into decimal number negative two-thirds is equivalent to negative six point uh, point six negative point sixty seven so you will have negative okay negative point sixty seven so that is our first option the second option would be using the negative one chip and you're going to capture the negative nine chip and you're going to land on the block where there's minus sign let's try to solve so what would be your score so that would be negative one minus negative nine remember you are going to write first the taker chip we call it taker chip if that is the chip that will capture or will eat we call it taker chip and the the chip that will be eaten or captured is what we call the taken chip so you have your negative nine will land to the block with minus sign and you captured negative nine so that becomes negative one the operation where it landed is minus so you have negative one minus the chip that you're going to capture is negative nine so using the loss of subtracting integers this becomes negative one plus nine so the answer would be positive eight so you as a player if you want to win this game you have to really be very careful as to what chip you're going to move because you're given these options this one will give you a negative point well, this one will give you a positive point. So, for you to win the Damak game, you need to accumulate higher points than your opponent. So, you have to be wise in moving your chip. Okay. Let us continue our... Uh, dis discussing the mechanics. What's the next rule? So, we have here... A chip is declared Dhamma if it reaches the end row of the opponent. So you are familiar with Dhamma. So this is the same the same as Dhamma or the ordinary Dhamma, the checkers game. So we can actually, if this chip, for example, any chips that belongs to you, belongs to the blue player, when it reaches to this row, of the opponent's side so we call it already dama so once it's already dama you can actually slide diagonally you can skip some um, blocks okay so same is true with the rule on the dama game the common game that you used to play so same is true with the red player if any of the red player's chip reaches to this side to the last or the terminal side we call it terminal side of the blue player then we call it dama okay let's continue if a dama chip takes a chip its score its score is doubled so when your dama eats or captures uh, an ordinary chip, the score is doubled. So you just solve it first, then you multiply it by two. But if a dama chip takes an opponent's dama chip, its score is quadrupled, meaning it's multiplied by four. For example, the blue player 
the blue player's dama has been eaten or captured by the red player's dama, then the score would be the quadruple. You solve it first, then multiply it by 4. Okay. So, let us continue. So, what would be the basic game play? So, the game ends or wh when would be... Uh, when does the game end? So, we have here any of the following will tell us that the game must end. So, we have here the 20-minute game period lapse. So, the game duration is only 20 minutes. Then, the moves are repetitive. Meaning to say, if the blue player and the red player, both of them has one chip remaining. So, their moves will be repetitive. So, the game should be ended. Or, it could be a player has no more chip to move. Meaning, one player was running out of chips. So, the game ends. Or, it could be an opponent's chip is cornered. So, there's no way um, either of the players can move. So, that is also another um, sign that the game will end. Okay, the remaining chip or chips of the players are to be added to the respective scores. So, if the remaining chip is a dama, then its score is also doubled. The player with the greater accumulated total score wins the game. Okay, so for the Damat elementary category, so for grades 1 and 2, we call it, we use counting Damats. So these chips have counting numbers that you can see on the chips. So these are the set of counting numbers for the counting Damat. For grades 3 and 4, we have whole damats. Okay, so what's the difference between counting damats? Always remember, for counting damats, we're in the damat, this kind of level, use counting numbers. Counting numbers starts from 1, 2, and so on. Where for the whole damat, it includes 0, and so on. And then, for fraction damats, for grade 5 and 6, you have it here, fraction damats. And for the integer, or for the grade 7, but that is also what we're going to use just for you to familiarize the integers. You have negative 9, 6, negative 1, 4, 0, negative 3, 10, negative 7, negative 11, 8, negative 5, 2. That's for integer. For grade 8, we have rational dama. So these are the set of fractions. Rational. We're in you are going to use for the chips and this is for the radical for grade 9 we use the radical dama okay and for the polynomial dama is fourth year so we will be using this one and to make oh, to end this video Let's have a math code. But I hope that you have understood every rule that I have discussed about the mechanics of the Damath game. So, to end this video, let's have a math code. Mathematics is not about numbers, equations, computations, or algorithms. It is about understanding. So that would be all and thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe my channel.